Hi everyone, it's Raja and Raven, and you're watching this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Fashion Photo Review. Down under. Today, we are going to be tooting and booting the looks from Down Under of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 1. I just ruined that whole thing. Do it again! We are going to be tooting and booting the looks Down Under of... Bar and Jam! Down to the last five queens of the very first season of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under. It's been very interesting, it's been fun, and out of all of the seasons of Down Under, this has definitely been the first one. <laughs> yeah, definitely the first. And in, in true fashion, the queens Down Under are showing exactly their identity and the fingerprint that the Down Under queens have. Mm -hmm. These queens are bringing it, and I'm loving it. And today's episode is all about... How's your head? Peace. There's nothing I love more than uh, adorning my head with with just about anything. Everything from trash bags to stuffed animals to uh, flowers and you name it, I've done it. Buckets of blood. I feel like Liz Taylor. I feel a little bit like She-Ra. You look like the loveliest She-Ra in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> that is so Stupid, <laughs> and I love it. All the queens had to utilize a headdress into their costume and see how beautifully it actually complements their costume. Because you know, sometimes bitches be throwing something on top of their head that has nothing to do with the rest of what they're wearing and it kind of throws it off. And sometimes the headdress is just, maybe that's all you're gonna wear. Maybe these bitches come out naked. Been there, done it. So who's up first? Karen from Finance. Stunning. Oh, she's a poodle. Oh my God, it's stunning. Jesus Christ, that's huge. Let's talk about the dress though. Yeah, the dress is amazing. Oh, Even the dress by itself without the headdress, she could wear that in so many different ways with so many different things. But then that headdress made out of those ostrich feathers that match the dress. It's spectacular. Spectacular! It's beautiful. It is enormous. It is. It is a piece. It's a statement. It fits her beautifully. The dress is divine. It is so gorgeous. And I love the little turquoise bows. So nice against that kind of dusty, soft pink. That mauvey pink. I don't know. It just. I think she looks great. I couldn't be more impressed with her than I am right now. And I love this so much. I give her a complete toot. Toot. Next, we bring to the stage Art Simone. She's giving us nature, darling, nature. Taking it out into the, into the wild, into the garden. Into the bush. To the bush, honey. Everything's the bush. She's the best Sheila in a rose bush, yes. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Pretty. And I love the dress. Mm -hmm. The dress is my favorite part. The headdress is pretty, it's gorgeous too. It's very art because Art Simone is a multi-talented and she always brings this kind of sculptural feel to what she does. Everything feels like a floral arrangement in what she does. So I think this is really right up her alley. It's uh, beautiful color choices. I love the dress working as sort of a garden trellis of florals on the body. I think it's beautiful. She looks stunning and I give Art Simone a Toot. Toot. Next we bring to the stage, Ketamine. Meh. I know. And she's someone who I kind of would have thought would have gone there. Yeah. Like she would have had like a headdress. Like this to me. Is a wig. Yeah, it's and it's a light up wig. It's, you know, that's fierce. It actually has LED lights in it, but it's not really headdress. It doesn't scream headdress. I, I love the dress that she's wearing. The headdress needed to be larger. It needed to be more headdress. It doesn't say headdress. It just says wig to me. I think there needed to be height to it. It needed more drama. Lighting it up wasn't enough drama for me. No, and what would have, I think, taken it there is if she took all of these LED pipes and she made like some like fierce Marvin the Martian type mohawk on that instead of just like two pigtails that fell down, like something that went up. Bigger, bigger, bigger. She needed to kind of stroke it and get it big, honey. It doesn't give me impact, headdress impact. It gives me another kind of impact. I think it's awesome and I love the boots, but the headdress part is, uh, it's a kind of a flop. The armor piece that she's got on is really cool. I like the boots that she's got on. 
I like the thing that she's got on her head, but it just doesn't go with the assignment. I still like it all together, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a two. Everything else looks great. I give the dress a two, but the headdress itself a boot. So if I'm grading like that, it's a boot. Next, we bring to the stage Electra Shaw. She is wearing her own swing. <laughs> I love this. I do too. First of all, that headdress itself isn't as like, like to me, like I would like to see more feathers or I'd like to see a more interesting top hat. But the fact that the swing is attached to her head is fantastic. I wish the hat were bigger and it looked like, wow, what an amazing top hat. Oh, and it's a headdress and there's a swing coming out of it. The hat does look very cheap. She's giving me, you know, Nicole Kidman in Moulin Rouge. It is very Nicole Kidman from Moulin Rouge with the collar and then all the fringe and the cute little glove. Yeah. Sateen coming down from the ceiling, but she uh, brought the ceiling with her, which is impressive. She is her own chandelier that she can swing from. And I love this idea. I think the outfit is really cute. And I think without the headdress itself, the outfit is still cute. I think it's clever. It has humor and it's definitely inventive and I'm into it. And I give this look a two. I give it a two. All right, last but not least is Scarlet Adams. Yes, bitch. Come on, Cher Liberace, Liberacher. Wow, I'm into it. I love it. I love this. Top to bottom. It is absolutely stunning. She is the ultimate showgirl. Look at her in all of her marabou, that beautiful beading. Who did that costume for her? It is absolutely stunning. The amount of feathers is beyond. The color coordination of all the beading and the, and the soft, blushy, peachy feathers. Everything about it is just absolutely stunning. Absolutely showgirl, full on drag. It is Fantastic. It's very Zigfield Follies. Zigfield Follies, the houses down. And you know, I love that color. Anything that's in beige or champagne or shades of nudes, I'm all about. It is Gorgiesa Fontaine de la Croix of the House of Gorgiesa. Dang, bitch. Yeah. Yeah, it's a two. It's a two. Trend alert. Feathers. Plums. Ostrich. Emu feathers. Emu. Yeah, it's just all over the place. Oh, come, feathers. Come, come, come. Feathers, 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 and more feathers. I love your feathers. Our top two of the week is... Scarlet Adam. Scarlet Adam. She is giving... Scarlet in champagne. Pain. Ooh la la. Yeah. So next episode is the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under. I'm so excited. Ah! We are just days away from crowning the first queen of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under. Are you Team Scarlet Adams? Are you Team Kidamine? Are you Team Karen from Finance? Or are you Team Art Simone? RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under is available on TVNZ in New Zealand, Stan in Australia, BBC Three in the UK, Crave in Canada, and on WOW Presents Plus everywhere else worldwide. Raven, how's your head? I haven't had any complaints. <laughs> Frasha, how is your headdress? My headdress is heavy. <laughs> your headdress is heavy? But my head is excellent, honey. Real nice and toothy. <laughs> Sweet toothy. <laughs> tooth. <laughs> That's the tooth, the whole tooth, and nothing but the tooth. All right, bitch, I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.